What's up, guys? Today we're going to talk about how to get into Emory University, which is located in Atlanta, Georgia. Tip number one. Below this video is a link to my article, How to Get into the Ivy League Ethically. Yes, Emory is not a member of the Ivy League. However, if you read every word of that article as a ninth grader or a 10th grader or an 11th grader, you are going to set the table really nicely for your senior year and be an extremely competitive applicant for Emory University before it even comes time to complete the application, which we will be talking about in greater depth today. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is that you want to put together an extracurricular resume because even though Emory University does not allow you the opportunity to upload a full-fledged extracurricular resume to its supplement, you can and should share a 650-word extracurricular resume in the additional information section of the Common Apps writing page. This is all the way at the bottom of the writing page below the optional COVID essay. That's where you would plug in a 650 word resume that goes into greater depth and breadth about your accomplishments throughout your high school career and your summers than the activities portion of the common portion of the Common App could ever allow you to do because it's so limited in terms of how many characters you have on that activities page. So that's why that additional information section of the writing page is a very wise decision for you to take advantage of for you to share more about your extracurricular exploits. I'll also note that once you actually uh, have submitted the application to Emory, Emory on its uh, application dashboard of, and its portal specifically will allow you to upload more information or share more information about yourself. And I have had students in the past upload their full-fledged extracurricular resume in even greater depth than 650 words uh, that you're limited to on the additional information section of the Common App, right to that application portal or, or that Emory portal. But this is post submitting your Emory application. So just realize you're not going to have an opportunity to do that uh, unless you've submitted the Emory application already and they've sent you information about how to log into their Emory portal. Uh, to learn how to put together a wonderful extracurricular resume, and I will go so far as to say an extraordinary extracurricular resume, click the link below this video to my short course, How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume. It's less than an hour in length, and it is going to teach you everything you need to know about how to communicate effectively on that document so you can put your uh, differentiated accomplishments front and center, center for the admissions officers reviewing your application at Emory. Next tip, apply early decision. Emory University is a school that is very selective. It wouldn't be something I consider hyper selective, but it is definitely very selective. Its regular uh, acceptance rate is definitely plunged in recent years, but overall, uh, Emory's acceptance rate is still sort of hovering at around 10%, which is, you know, one in 10 is pretty daunting sounding, but compared to the Ivies, that's still pretty high. Uh, and when you think about it from the perspective of the overall acceptance rate at around 10 to its ED, early decision acceptance rate, which is over 30% still, it is very wise for you to consider applying early decision because there you're going to give yourself like a 3 in 10 chance of getting in as opposed to a 1 in 10 chance of getting in. Do realize that early decision is binding. So if you get an early decision at Emory, you are going to be going to Emory. The other thing about early decision in Embry that is somewhat unique is they offer two early decision deadlines. They have one for November 1st. They have one in early January. You hear within usually a month and a half of applying on either time. So if you don't get into your true first school, first choice school early decision, uh, you always have a chance to do early decision two at Emory as well and be binded to go to Emory by roughly Valentine's Day. Uh, so you actually have two chances to go ED at Emory. Uh, and I would definitely say that either of those is going to give you a big advantage relative to applying regular decision, which is the point at which all the students who didn't get into the Ivy League schools will now be applying to Emory. <laughs> so definitely try to go in early because that's showing that you uh, really are in it to win it for Emory. And Emory wants students who want to be there and not just students who got rejected from Brown or Penn or, or other schools. Um, like Wash U or Vanderbilt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Emory wants people who wants them, who want them. They want to yield those students guaranteed. That's why early decision exists. Give them what they want early, and you'll have happy news hopefully by the holiday season if you do ED one at least, and the, and happy news by Valentine's Day hopefully if you do ED two. 
But again, it limits your ability to know if you got into the regular decision schools on your list because you have to pull those applications uh, and you cannot go to them, at least not officially, without breaking rules and besmirching the reputation of your high school, et cetera, et cetera. Next tip is let's actually dig into the, the application itself. Uh, as I emphasized in that article I referred to earlier, how to get into the Ivy League ethically, writing is a lost art these days. It is not emphasized enough in high school. I say this all the time. I know I sound like a broken record, but unfortunately the emphasis over the last 20 years or so on STEM education has left history and English to fend for themselves. And those are the courses that really traditionally have taught students to think critically and write critically and write well. Uh, and as a result, very, very, very smart students have a very uh, underdeveloped sense of writing. Uh, and as a result, if you can write well, as if you were from a bygone era, you are going to have a leg up compared to all of your competition. And the remaining of this the remainder of this video is going to emphasize how you can write uh, well and in a way that will be convincing on the supplement to Emory University. Unfortunately, Emory doesn't give you that much room to run in terms of its writing on its uh, school-specific supplement to the Common App. The essay questions are not that long. Uh, number one question is what academic areas are you interested in exploring in college? You only have 200 words for this one. And that question is very specifically tailored. It doesn't say, why do you want to go to Emory? It says, what academic areas are you interested in exploring in college? So I want you to devote as many of those 200 words to painting a picture of you engaging in academic areas of interest at Emory. So don't just write a love letter here to biology and how much you find biology or genetics or whatever you may find interesting interesting. Get more, and don't just write specifics about genetics or specifics about biology. Uh, rather, write specifics of biology or genetics at Emory. That's really important. Really connect it to the fact that you aren't just looking to study biology or genetics. Again, I keep using that example, but whatever it is you're saying you're majoring in anywhere, but that you really want to do it at Emory. So yes, your focus will be on the areas of interest that you have in exploring academically, but your goal will be to show you exploring those areas on Emory's campus with an Emory professor or two or three or whatever, or with a particular research institute inside the classroom or outside the classroom during the summers, whatever it may be, you really need to try your very best to paint a picture of you taking advantage of Emory's specific opportunities in this very short essay. You have very few words with which to work, so that means that you must, you absolutely must have a one sentence introductory paragraph. It must also include a thesis. So you summarize for the reader right off the bat what it is you're gonna be talking about for the remainder of the sentences. The next uh, basically three to seven sentences, probably five to seven sentences should be your body. And then the last sentence should be your conclusion. The body supports the thesis, that's where you give more depth about what your why how you want to pursue those areas at Emory in particular and then the conclusion uh, says something new don't just repeat the first sentence in the end of the essay say something new thoughtful but that relates to the previous 187 words or whatever you've already written so that's essay number one essay number two you have the opportunity to answer one of five different prompts in only 150 words. Again, I think this is a travesty for people who like to write, but you're going to make the most of those 150 words. Reflect on a personal experience where you intentionally expanded your cultural awareness is option one. When was the last time you questioned something that you had thought to be true? That's option two. Number three, if you could witness a historic event, past, present, or future, firsthand, what would it be and why? Number four, Share a time when you were awestruck. Number five, which book, character, song, monologue, or piece of work, uh, fiction or nonfiction, seems made for you and why? This is all on you, meaning that it's not really an Emory-specific essay in the sense that you don't need to name drop Emory at all here. You really want to put the focus on you and your value system. Similar to a very, very short Common App essay, you want to show uh, yourself in a new light 
and one that makes you more likable by the end of the 150 words than you were in the beginning of the 150 words. Share something about you, again, that you have not shared elsewhere. Uh, so if you feel like the topic of the essay is too much cl uh, close to what you wrote in the main Common App essay of 650 words, pick something completely different to show a different side of yourself. Uh, again, this, this is a short number of words, so you don't have to recreate the wheel here, but you do want to think about how you can differentiate yourself further than you have up to this point. Uh, so if you are really interested in science and you've made that very clear already, let's say in the uh, earlier essay, uh, then pick another side of yourself that has nothing to do with science in this response because this is an opportunity to share something else about you that would make you an interesting person, not just student, but an interesting person to have on campus at Emory and as a member of the Emory alumni community for years to come. So that is the goal there. Even though you only have 150 words, I would still set it up as a traditional little essay. First sentence is your intro with a thesis. Next few sentences is your body that supports a thesis. And then a concluding sentence or so uh, that doesn't just wrap everything up, but then again, says something new, thought-provoking, leaves the reader wanting more uh, from you. That is the way in which I would approach this. I wish you the very best in terms of getting into Emory. It is a selective school. It's not hyper-selective, but it's very selective. And again, you're giving yourself a huge benefit if you apply early decision and you write well and you take the time to elaborate on your extracurricular activities, all of which we touched on in this video. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button below. Also subscribe to my channel. And if you want one-on-one -on -one college admissions coaching support, you can work with me one-on-one -on -one by going to collegemeister.com. Until next time, I wish you the very best and keep watching.